This news program is proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and M Now Biscuits. Casket of late Sir Rabi arrived in Port Mosby yesterday. National house cry of late Sir Rabi underway. And Mineral Resources Authority celebrates 15 years. Good evening, this is National MTV News. I'm Grace Papiali. Thank you for joining us. The casket of late Sarah Bin Amaliu arrived yesterday afternoon in Port Mosby from his home province of East New Britain, accompanied by Deputy Prime Minister John Rosso. On hand to receive late Sarah Bin's casket was Foreign Affairs and National Events Minister Justin Tachenko and the East New Britain community in Port Mosby. A solemn afternoon indeed as we witness the arrival of the casket of late Sir Rabi Namalu from his home province of East New Britain. Late Sir Rabi was described by a lot of Papua New Guineans as a man of integrity. As the casket of late Sir Rabi was slowly carried into the main arena, cries of the people could be heard. Accompanying late Sir Rabi's casket was Gazelle Open member Jelta Wong, Pomio MP Elias Kapavore, Namatanai MP Walter Schnobelt, and immediate family and friends, including Sir Charles Lepani. Standing to receive a dear brother back was former Prime Minister and former Western Highlands Governor Pius Wingti. An all emotional foreign affairs and national events minister, Justin Tachenko, thanked late Sir Rabi's family for supporting his public life and dedicating it to the development of PNG. The Namayu family and all the relatives from East New Britain and especially all his people from Kotopo that he served for many, many years, longest serving member. Thank you for the life of this wonderful leader of our nation. Tachenko described late Sir Rabi as a true leader in his caliber that stood out during the formative years of our country. Late Sir Rabi had a distinguished political career, including being PNG's Foreign Affairs Minister in the 1990s. Late Sir Rabi became a leading figure during our country's post-independence alongside late Sir Mekere Morauta, late Sir Anthony Siaguru and Sir Charles Lepani, often referred to as the Gang of Four. After the blessing, late Sir Rabi's casket was transported to the funeral home by members of the PNGDF. The casket of the late Sir Rabi Namaliu has left the Jackson's VIP terminal for the funeral home. On Sunday this week, a state funeral will be held at the Sejuan Guys Indoor Stadium for the public to pay their final respects. On Monday, the casket of the late Sir Rabi will lie in state at the Grand Hall at Parliament for our country's leaders to pay their final respects. On Tuesday next week, Sir Rabi will be laid to rest between late Sir McCarran Morota and late Sir William Skate at the Independence Hill next to Parliament House at Waigani. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. The Mineral Resource Authority celebrated its 15th anniversary in style yesterday at the APEC House in Port Mosby, with staff management and board taking time out to mark the significant day to launch its live mineral production data, a new system that will allow the MRE to have access to mineral data from all operating mines in Papua New Guinea in real time, along with the launch of their five-year strategic plan. A day to remember yesterday afternoon as MRA staff, management and board took time out together at the APEC House to celebrate, reminisce and look forward as an organisation. 
Acting Managing Director for MRA, Jerry Gary, said the milestone of 15 years is because of teamwork from those present and those that came before. It has been a teamwork. There has been many leaders before me and before my minister that have carried the responsibility of uh, uh, promoting and, and regulating the largest industry, which is the mining industry in the country. Mining Minister Se Anopala paid special tribute to the hardworking staff of MRA in the complex work they continue to do for the country. So I want to thank you for all your contributions throughout all these years. Thank you for getting the systems working because our industry depends on your expertise. Our industry uh, depends on expert advice. The event had a couple of slight delays as those in attendance awaited the arrival of Prime Minister James Marape from Rabaul. The Prime Minister wasted no time in addressing those in attendance. The important industry would like the sector to continue on playing an important role and finding a fine balance between national interest and our investor interest is very, very important. As most of you would have known in the three years going four years now since I have been the chief executive officer of our country, we try our absolute best to win more for our country, but also in respect to our investors' ability to make a return on the investment. Finding that fine balance has been a, a major focus of my government, but this would not have been so if MRA the event also saw the launch of the Mineral Production Dot Repository Hub by Prime Minister James Marape, a new system that allows the Mineral Resource Authority to have access to mineral data from all operating mines in Papua New Guinea in real time. This means MRA will have dedicated offices set in the hub at the mining house at Connie, where they will have mirror copies of the same data in real time, which their counterparts at mine sites will have access to. Cameras have been installed at mines processing plants. These cameras will transmit pictures and videos of these processes as they happen. In the last 40 years, mining companies have been submitting a form to MRA stating the amount of mineral they have been exporting. However, the MRA as the regulator has had no way of verifying the data given in the forms. Hence, the new system will address the gap. The system will not only allow the MRA and state to independently monitor minerals mined and exported, it will also give mining companies greater leverage on a transparency scale in the international state. Stage. It will ensure there is transparency and all minerals living the country is accounted for. But more importantly, the country stands to benefit more from its resources. The more we export, the more revenue is generated for PNG. This coincided with the launch of the five-year strategic plan for MRA. Rocky Iso, National MTV News. A 9.1 million Kinabiala court complex said to house both the district and the national court was officially opened by the Prime Minister James Marape and Chief Justice Segib Salika yesterday in Biala in the West New Britain province. Prime Minister James Marape was accompanied by few of his fellow cabinet members along with the Chief Justice, Sir Gibb Salika. They were given a warm traditional welcome. <laughs> Hundreds gathered to witness this opening of the court facility that was launched in 2017. According to the Chief Justice, this facility took too long for completion due to limited resources and COVID-19. Sir Gibbs, in his speech, urged the people to respect and take ownership of the facility. Beautiful facility here. Take care of it. That's my number one point. You have a beautiful place here. Take care of it. I don't want to come back here in three, five, four years' time or ten years' time to see it all splattered with betel nut and every other rubbish. Get rid of that from the moment you come into the court premises. Me no like look him this black kind person. Now you come bagrab him courthouse. Look out him this black uh, courthouse. Sir Gibbs also reminded the people that the facility represent the rule of law. The house is the face of law and order. You can understand him. You like you got problem, you got dispute 
This is where you come and solve it. Don't solve it on the streets. Don't take the law into your own hands. That is the reason why government put in this law, building law, for you to make use of. It is the face of law and order. You must use him so that all the disputes below you can be resolved in this courthouse, be heard, be determined by the judges who are going to be here. And so... Prime Minister James Marape during the occasion reminded the people of Biala of how peaceful and beautiful the town is and urged them to respect the law. Awesome. You may must hold him, talk to him, mama love leave me yet. In a nation of many diversity, diversity lo culture, diversity lo lotu, diversity lo economic wealth or individual status lo one one family. The common bind blow you me and rule of law in our country. And today, a symbolic time. Nubla district, Nubla courthouse, but more importantly, same people. Ribbon cutting to officiate the opening of the court complex was done by the Prime Minister, Sir Gibbs, and the former Chief Justice who initiated the project, Sir Salomo Inja. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to National MTV News. Final preparations are in place at the Sejon Guy Stadium for the National House Cry tomorrow evening. Prime Minister James Marape will attend and is expected to deliver his keynote address to the people of PNG, East New Britain and late Serabi Namaliu's family and friends. <laughs> The national house cry is expected to begin at around 5 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. The East New Britain community in Port Mosby will officiate during the proceedings with Tolai choirs to be performed. To open the line of speeches and condolence messages by prominent leaders, NCD Governor Powers Parkop will deliver the opening address. This will be followed by Prime Minister James Marape to deliver the keynote address. Traditional groups will be performing during the house cry tomorrow night. Late Sir Rabi Langanai Namaliu was described by many Papua New Guineans as a man who equally gained the confidence of the society at large. Foreign Affairs and National Events Minister Justin Tachenko told the gathering at the Jackson Ceremonial Car Park yesterday during the arrival of the casket that late Sir Rabi was a true statesman of our country, a man who diligently served Papua New Guinea and its people without fear or favor. The National House Cry is expected to begin at around 5 to 6 p.m. tomorrow afternoon and will end around 10 p.m. Invited guests, dignitaries and the general public are welcome to come and pay their last respects to our leader, late Serabi Langanai Namaliu. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. Papua New Guinea is not producing enough food for consumption. Food security is currently an issue that needs to be addressed or in the next few years, the country will be budgeting for food to feed citizens. This was highlighted by the CEO of Fresh Produce Development Agency, Mark Warinu, who was speaking during the National Security Seminar at NRI yesterday. According to FPDA's reports, the food supply chain is not performing well due to the availability, accessibility, consumption and stability of food supply to people. If we can passionately uh, have those systems established in the district, food coordination system, food banks, okay, supply chain system, controlling quality, food standards, all of that, we have a lot. How people can be basically staying in the homes in the farms, most of the time, quality time, you know, busy on production. 
The challenges involved in the supply for food can be externally from global price of food due to economic crisis and can be internal due to lack of infrastructures and support for producing food locally. The danger now that if things really get out of hand, then it will affect our, the, the supply lines. And there's a uh, looming global food crisis uh, as being uh, forecast by some of the leading agencies. And so PNC is part and parcel of that trend of challenge being faced at the moment. Papua New Guinea can cut down on importing food from overseas if the country is concentrating on producing locally. Currently, the country spends millions of kina in importing food from overseas. But the national government actually budgets for food rations, right? They make sure that the food for the people is actually captured in the national budget, which we don't do that. And one day, we'll come to that. Uh, if we don't plan well and execute the plans and care for the food security in the country, we'll come to that. Mr. Warinu said the way forward is that a national survey has to be done to know about food production capabilities in the country. He also highlighted that proper market facilities like food storage coolers and others must be provided for farmers to access for proper supply of food to continue. Cynthia Maku, National MTV News. Papua New Guinea Defence Force is focusing on fixing internal issues in order to perform well as the country's national security protector. PNGDF Commander Major, Mark, Major General Mark Goina has identified some key areas that need to be addressed internally to push work forward. PNGDF Commander Major General Mark Goina was speaking during the National Security Seminar at NRI yesterday. Major Goina has highlighted five lines of effort or LOEs that need to be addressed internally by the force. One important area is focusing on PNGDF personnel's welfare. Major Goina spoke of the importance of reviewing PNGDF's White Paper 2023 to capture all of Defence Force aims and goals in addressing security. The work the PNGDF is currently doing to stabilise our situation and set the conditions for future agile, competent and relevant Defence Force that is fully capable and ready to uphold and defend national defense interest. There is also a greater need to stabilize the force. Major Goina noted that there is a need to increase the force's capability percentage. The, def the defense assessment of 2021 observed that the PNDDF suffers very serious capability decline, comprising, compromising our national security. He added that in order for the PNG Defence Force to deliver its mandated duty, the focused areas and challenges need to be achieved. He assured the nation that under his leadership, he will push forward for greater change in the force. Cynthia Maku, National MTV News. Prime Minister James Marape during the opening of the Biala Court Complex in Western, West New Britain province urged all citizens to have respect for the rule of law for effective functioning of the economy. Prime Minister James Marape highlighted that it is important for all individuals to have respect for the rule of law, so to divert vast funding allocated to combat law and order issues to fund other vital services that are lacking in various parts of the country. That's the cheapest form of contribution to our country. It not cost law money. Lobian him law. He got cost law selling police. Look, I'm deal with them law and order. Money him law fix him road. Money him law fix him house sick. Now make him new house sick. And by we waste him again long. Recruit him more police. Pay him all fortnight law. Now make him work law police. No can think also money him law government and big law to us. That's why the last three years, four years, me block along deficit budget. Because actual money is tough inside. Long basket block government, lick lick. Now you must borrow him simpler more so that make so courthouse he walk, make so public safety pay, national judiciary pay, 
this SIP run, PSIP run, no got enough money because organ sector block expenditure it can get money, including police operations and police costs. Marape says the statement take back PNG can come into realization when individuals, regardless of your status quo, are subject to the rule of law. But the greatest how much you and me collectively can contribute to country believe me. And the greatest contribution every one of us can make to our country. From Level Blomi, also Prime Minister and Ministers, and the Mipla Alliance of the Executive Government, come lo, you may all get along society. Um, suppose you may be an him rule of law in our society. Law office, be an him law. Long parliament, be an him law. Long courthouse, be an him law. Long society, be an him law. That is the greatest contribution all our citizens can collectively give to our country. Take the PNG, but come underneath this one. Marape added that the greatest contributions any citizens can give back to their country is obeying and respecting the laws, highlighting that it is free of charge. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. East operations for police in Western Highlands province has been successful, with more illegal firearms confiscated and three prison escapees also caught. Provincial Police Commander Superintendent John Sagom held a press conference yesterday at Mount Hagen Police Station to give a brief update on the Easter weekend operations. Three factory-made firearms were confiscated and kept as court exhibits. According to PPC Sagom, the M16 rifle was from a policeman who is still on the run, while the Magnum pistols were from two civilians caught by Kagamuga police under station commander Inspector Moses Kalandi. One suspect was caught in collaboration with Bayer police at Tigi, Day District, and the other was caught at Kagamuga by senior constable Fred Kama after a search and physical struggle following a tip-off. The suspect made his first appearance in court yesterday. During the Easter operations, there were also three escapees that were caught. And they were charged with uh, offense, offenses ranging from willful murder, rape, and car theft and armed robbery. So one of those suspects, which was caught, is believed to be the ringleader involved in the theft of motor vehicles in the islands region and also in the northern Command. PPC Sagom said the suspect was an escapee from Buyebi Jail in Southern Highlands and Biute Jail, Eastern Highlands. He got caught recently at Hagen Coffee while in the act of attempting another vehicle theft. Another escapee was caught at Kagamuga Airport after ending up in an accident with the getaway vehicle he was escaping in. Soon after an armed robbery, police realized that he was also an escapee from Baisu jail and had been suspected of murder of an Australian man in 2013 and rape of a Filipino woman. The third escapee was also caught in Mount Hagen City after he was spotted by police. So all in all, uh, we had a successful operation during the uh, Easter weekend uh, in which we have these three weapons here and also the arrest of the three escapees. Uh, who are now also being held in custody. Uh, I will once again uh, thank all my officers, the commission officers, uh, all my non commission officers, all my policemen and women uh, for a job well done in ensuring that Western Islands uh, become the safest place for everyone to conduct business. And we will make sure that we will do all our best in policing services for our, our citizens in Western Islands and also for other visitors uh, passing through Western Islands uh, to do business here. PPC Sagom also called on all colleague PPCs in the Highlands region to team up to ensure thorough investigations are done into such crimes while preventing future ones. Amanda Ilaitia, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us.
Welcome back to National MTV News. Managing Director of National Forest Authority, John Mosoro, has urged fellow MDs and CEOs to consider undertaking the Advanced Diploma in Leadership and Government course offered at the Pacific Institute of Leadership and Governance. He made these comments after graduating with his di Advanced Diploma at PILAG yesterday. A determined MD John Mosoro told reporters during a media conference yesterday that he is now ready to better serve the people of PNG, especially in the forestry sector. One thing that I realized is that when you're given a government policy is, uh, is made or endorsed by NEC, it's a government policy, we have to implement it. So I put my time in this course. This is what Every potential person who wants to be a department lead or an organization or a managing director must it's a compulsory, must sit for this course and must pass it and complete it properly. MD Mosoro further added that this course is relevant for departmental heads to undertake. One important thing that I've picked up from this course is this. Uh, <clears throat> you have to know your... Um, Finance Management Act, Public Service Management Rules. You, know, you have to know your general orders. You have to understand um, how a new uh, big organization can be managed. A total of 15 departmental heads, like Chief Censor Jim Abani, Dr. Mange Matui of the Constitutional Law Reform Commission, and others, including Mr. Mosoro, graduated yesterday with advanced diplomas in leadership and government during PILAG's graduation. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. Moving to overseas news now and tropical cyclone Ilsa in Australia has finally slowed down whilst heading towards the country's northern territory. But authorities warn the system is still going to bring heavy rain and damaging winds with flood watches in place as it continues its journey into the Northern Territory. The powerful system ripped over the Pilbara as a Category 4 cyclone with attention in the area now shifting to recovery. So the one positive thing about this cyclone is it did avoid the major population centres and it drifted away from Broome and managed to cross a couple of hundred kilometres north of Port Hedland in a pretty sparsely populated area. But for those it did impact, they've got a pretty big clean-up. So Padu Roadhouse was destroyed. Uh, the owners there sheltered in there overnight when the cyclone crosses a Category 4 with sustained wind gusts, really strong sustained wind gusts, well over 200 kilometres an hour. And when it became obvious that their building was ripping apart around them. They made a dash for the sh a shipping container and sheltered there for the rest of the evening. As the uh, cyclone also um, caused a lot of havoc to a cattle station around there, so uh, the managers and workers on that cattle station evacuated before the cyclone hit. They'll go back today and assess uh, infrastructure losses and, and hopefully for them stock losses uh, won't be too big. The one concern they have is a lot of their cattle were calving at the moment, so the concern is with those really strong destructive winds and those really heavy rainfall totals that uh, could impact those smaller animals. So we'll wait to see from them what the full extent of damage is. We also spoke to another station just a little bit further. A man charged for the stabbing and killing of a paramedic faces caught in Sydney. 29-year-old paramedic was attacked while he and his colleague were taking a break in a McDonald's car park. He later died in hospital. A 21-year-old man was arrested at the scene and police have confirmed it was a random attack. The accused lawyer says his client was made aware of the severity of the situation. My client's currently at police bedside. He's suffering from a mental health issue. Um, so there's nothing further that I can say at the moment. Does your client know the gravity of the charges? Um, I've explained it and he's fully aware of the gravity of the offences. Protests erupted in Paris over the government's decision to approve the pension bill. 
Few people have been surprised by this decision here in Paris, but after months of protests, the Constitutional Council's decision to approve President Macron's controversial pension reform has added to what has been growing anger here in France. While anger has really been the predominant emotion that we've seen over recent weeks, another one has been added to the mix today, and that is disappointment. Now, France's top constitutional body has decided to green light President Macron's pension reform. This has cleared the path for him to increase the country's pension age by two years from 62 to 64. Democracy is dead uh, today. More than anything, I'm angry because that's all I have left right now. There's nothing else. It's a disaster for our country. The legislation wasn't approved in full. There were a few sections of it that didn't stack up legally, according to the Constitutional Council. However, the key part of the legislation, which was, of course, the increase to the pension age, has been given the green light to go ahead. That means that this controversial and deeply unpopular package that the president forced through parliament uh, circumventing a vote will now become law. Uh, people that have protested against this reform for weeks now, for months even, they say they're incredibly disappointed. U.S. President Joe Biden returns to County Mayo on the last leg of his Ireland tour. The president spoke at a homecoming celebration outside a cathedral in the town of Ballina, where a crowd of up to 20,000 people lined the streets. It comes a day after President Biden declared he was home as he made an historic address to the Irish Parliament. And I want to thank you. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I want to thank you for the incredible generosity you've shown, like so many other Irish families across this country, who opened up their hearts and homes tens of thousands of Ukrainian refugees fleeing Russia's brutal violence. I've been there many times. Ireland remembers. The European Space Agency has started on an eight-year mission to Jupiter. Two, one, go. The start of a journey to the outer reaches of the solar system. This is the European Space Agency's JUICE mission. And it has a four billion mile voyage ahead. It's travelling here to Jupiter's giant moons, some of the largest in the solar system. They're shrouded in thick layers of ice, but beneath there are hints of vast liquid oceans, and scientists want to find out if they could support life. The UK has developed one of the instruments on the spacecraft. So what we're looking at here is the flight spare of our instrument. The black box is the electronics box. So that's where the data is sent through. And that's actually put into a vault on the main body of the spacecraft. It will help us to see if the oceans are there and whether they have the conditions that are right for life. National MTV News continues after the break with Trukai Sports. Stay with us. Tokai Sports. Welcome to Tokai Sports. In round two of the Capital Rugby League Union competition played today, the A grade match saw the Defence Rugby Union Club defeating the Heliquins 24 to 7 points. The Defence Rugby Union Club took on the Holly Queens at around 11 a.m. today at the Bava Park Rugby Union Field. Both sides secured one try each with successful conversions in the first half, but the second half saw the defence side proving too strong as they scored their winning try. A fully defence attired assistant coach to the defence side, Abraham Sarufa, shared his thoughts on their win. We're very happy with this win, uh, the second round, 24-7 uh, uh, against Harley Quinns. Harley Quinns, a uh, strong team also. But uh, we, we have planned this to come and uh, play and get a win. Assistant coach Sarufa also highlighted on the key areas of improvement that the club will be focusing at for their upcoming matches. 
uh, we need to work on uh, our, our defense, defensive play. Uh, and uh, I think also the kicking game, our kickers, placing balls and everywhere, but they have to have a uh, uh, aim what they are kicking now uh, during the play, but kicking game, but uh, we need to improve in our defense. Meanwhile, the team usually undergoes its training sessions at the Murray Barracks Rugby Field weekly at 5 p.m. This is the defense under 20 and under 23 division, the A-grade division, the women's and the premier divisions undergo their training sessions. Lisa Puni Trukai Sports. Moving to overseas sports now and in NRL, the Melbourne Storm's three-match winning streak has over after they were defeated by Manly last night. In a brutal contest at Brookvale, five players were placed on report and three spent time in the sin bin as the match threatened to boil over. Manly eventually triumphed to move up to second on the competition ladder. In the earlier match, the Sharks beat the Sydney Roosters 22 points to 12. Trailing 12-8 at halftime, the Sharks held the Roosters scoreless after the break, running in three tries of their own to move up to fifth position. Young at times, you know. Basically, we got what we deserved tonight, you know. Um, so, like I say, you know, to, you know, to keep them to, was it 18 points was probably a good effort there, but it's, you know, we, we just never give ourselves a chance to win the game, I didn't think, you know, and uh, especially our second half was really poor, especially the start, and yeah, like I say, we, we didn't play too smart at all. In the AFL gather round clash at Adelaide Oval, the Swans defeated Richmond while Fremantle came behind to beat Gold Coast. The Swans streaked away in the final term, outscoring Richmond seven goals to one to run out winners 18 goals 14 122 to 11 goals 1278. The win moves Sydney up to fourth on the ladder. While the Tigers are back in 13th in the earlier game at Norwood Oval, Fremantle came from behind to beat Gold Coast by 10 points. The Suns led by 23 points in the third quarter, but were pegged back to four to a 15 goals 10 100 to 13 goals 12 90 defeat. Trukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. <laughs> Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. In soccer, Newcastle have had a dramatic victory over MacArthur at the Hunter Stadium. Matthew Yeoman's 79th minute opener gave Newcastle a deserved lead, but MacArthur scored an injury time equaliser that looked to give the visitors a share of the points. However, O'Neill's 95th minute winner gave the Jets all three points. The win moved Newcastle up to seventh on the competition ladder. The Brumbies have survived a comeback scare from the Fiji Drua in their Super Rugby Pacific match. The Australian side had to dig deep to record a 45 points to 28 win in Canberra. The Brumbies led 19-0 early, but the Andrua fought back to trail by just three points midway through the second half before the Brumbies eventually pulled away. Earlier, the Reds bounced back to beat Moana Pacifica 40 points to 28 in Apia. And in the Super W competition, the Brumbies beat the Melbourne Rebels 30 points to 23. And that ends Trukai Sports. The Money Plus Weather Report is next. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. Taking a look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours in southern region, Port Mosby City find this afternoon and tonight, Popondetta few showers tonight. In Momase region, Lay City becoming cloudy with occasional showers tonight, Vanimo cloudy with frequent showers and possible thunderstorms. In the New Guinea Islands region, Lorengao cloudy with frequent showers and possible thunderstorms. Bukat periods of thundery rain this afternoon and tonight. 
In the Highlands region, all centers frequent showers and thunderstorms this evening and tonight, easing towards morning. Waters of Southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait to Daru to Kerama to Port Mosby to Hood Point to Samurai Islands seas 0.5 to 1.3 meter. Waters of Samurai Island to Eastern and Western Milan Bay Islands to Cape Vogel seas 1.5 to 2.5 meters. Waters of Cape Vogel to Huon Gulf to Finchafen seas 0.5 to 1.0 meter. What is off Finchofen through VTS Dampier Straits to CSE Long Island to Medang? Seas 1.5 to 2.5 meters. What is north of Medang to Wiwek to Vanimo and northern PNG Indonesian border? Seas 2 to 3 meters. What is of Manus and its western group of islands? Seas 1.5 1.5 to 2.5 meters. What is of New Island to Bougainville and Western Seaboard of New Britain? Seas 1.5 to 2.5 meters. What is of Eastern Seaboard of New Britain? Seas 0.5 to 1.3 meters. Coral Sea sea smooth to slight northwest to southwest winds of 5 to 15 knots. Solomon Sea sea moderate to fresh south to southwest winds of 15 to 20 knots. Bismarck Sea sea fresh to rough northwest winds of 20 to 30 knots. Pacific Ocean sea moderate to patches rough northwest to westerly winds of 15 to 25 knots. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that wraps up the new sports and weather for Saturday, the 15th of April, 2023. From all of us here, pleasant viewing. Bye for now. This news program was proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Gold Nuggets.